Hi and welcome, you're watching CDH TV with a playtesting gameplay video. Normally we do some competitive gameplay here, but today we're trying out and playtesting a Boros deck versus normal CDH competitive decks. So the three competitive decks we have in this match are Joyra, Storm, Weatherlight Captain, some Frasius, Bruce, Sands, Black and Kenrith, the Returned King. While I'm gonna be piloting a Boros combination with Bruce and Akiri, but why would I wanna play this weak deck versus some serious good competitive decks? The reason is very simple, I wanna play test and see how good Boros have gotten. They have gotten a few upgrades in form of Underworld Breach, Deflecting Swat, Dockside Extortionist, Sevain's Reclamation, and smothering tight. But I don't think that the Boros color identity has anything CDH viable to offer yet. I think they have a long way to go still, but they are getting there and in this gameplay we're gonna see how much more they basically need. And in the end of this video we're gonna do a little bit of an analysis about what Boros is currently lacking and what they need to see print to get a little bit more viable. But now, let's watch the match. I guess I'll go ahead and draw my card. Command tower and uh, pass my turn. I'm gonna draw a card. Scalding Tarn into play and we are going to pass the turn as well. Oh, I'll play this nice proxy Tropical Island. I'll tap one and attempt to cast a Mystic Remora. You have always gone. Man, don't miss. I figured. I'll pass. So, uh, Misty Lane Force, Lotus Petal, Mana Crap. I mean, it's okay, but it, it, it's no turn one attempt fish. Um, I think I'm gonna pull out a Urza. I, I thought you were gonna wheel, but sure. Urza is very interesting in that deck. I will play a Forest, and after that I will play Darkside Extortionist. Uh, that's... yeah, that's two. I will use one Treasure to play a Mana Vault. Pass the turn to you, Mons. I'm gonna put a snow-covered mountain into play, and sadly we're gonna pass the turn. I'll uh, play a city of brass and pass. I'll play a city of brass and pass while I sit on my ass. I'll cast my commander. And I'd like to attempt to cast mana drain. I'll, I'll crack it, Mesa. Steam vent into play, then I'll tap spell pierce. Is that a dispel? It's a spell pierce. For that, you are going to take one. I pass after that. I will start by casting Mana Crypt. I'll crack this for blue. I want to cast Narset Harder of Eight. So I'll use the ability to look at the top four. Uh, I'll pick... No, sorry. I changed my mind. Uh, negate. So I uh, have one floating. I'll tap one green. And I want to play Isochron Scepter. Wait, if that is a dramatic reversal, you have infinite mana. But you don't win from infinite colorless mana. I pass on Isochron on the stack. I pass on Isochron on the stack. Pack of negate. I'm gonna crack this meanwhile and find the uh, play toe. Uh, I'll pass my turn to you, Moss. In the end step, I'm going to tap my play toe and cast Enlightened Tutor. Uh, where is it? Here's the mana crypt for uh, Enlightened Tutor. Okay, so I'm gonna draw this. I'm gonna cast my mana crypt and I'm gonna I'm gonna cast a Smothering Tight. No! Hey, you just get to put treasure off me. I'm not gonna get that many treasures. There's a there's a Narset in play. Pass the turn. Sure. I won't pay. You can get a treasure. I'll play man confluence and pass. I'm gonna leave this man at half because I need to or I lose. So you get another treasure. I guess so. I'll pull a scald and pass the turn. Draw my card card for turn. Yeah, I should use Narset. I'll pick Imperial Seed. I would really. Hoping that was going to be a box topper for uh, Double Masters. I, I really want more art of I that. I think no, it's not on reprint in the reserve list. Actually, they can make it. But yeah, like it's not on the reserve list. Nothing for Portal Three Kingdoms. That's why they're a terrible investment. Yes. Uh, I'll play Silvering Five, and I want to play <laughs> Kenrith, the Return King. I have no response to Kenrith. I have no response to Ken. I have no response to Kenrith. Very lovely. Play uh, Overgrown Tomb. It comes into play untapped, so I'll take two, and then I'll play. Uh, I will cast Imperial Seal. I'm telling you, Hans, Blood Moon just would have saved Michael two life there, because he would have had that Overgrown Tomb coming to play untapped. Kind of wanted some treasures first, okay? I want treasure. I want gold. I want gold. I'll be I'll be done after that. I'm gonna draw a card for the turn. 
tap this for white, tap this for red. We're gonna cost Akiri. That is a beefy, beefy uh, line slinger. Yeah, she's currently a 4 3 first strike vigilance. Then I'm gonna cost a blood moon by sacrificing this treasure and tapping the mana crypt. In response, I'm gonna sack my skulls and taunt while I can. I'm gonna respond, then I'd like to cast intuition. I have no response to an intuition. I'm Boros. I know that I am totally messing this one part up. Dockside, Underworld Breach, Noxious Revival. Well, yeah, we've had good report. I'll target Brian. How big is your graveyard, by the way, Samurai? I've only got like two, three cards. I was like, if I give him Noxus, he could just do either Underworld Breach or Dockside. I think I'm gonna give you Underworld. You fool! I mean, it was a good choice, but still. Ha ha ha, he made the wrong choice. But it was the correct choice, but it was wrong to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right for the wrong reasons. Blood Moon hits the play, I guess. And I, I pass the turn. Actually, this is pretty sweet. I'll pass the turn. I am paying with two more cards. Um, I'm gonna cast a Gilded Drake. I don't have a response. I don't have a response either. I think I know what creature I'm gonna take. Can riff? <laughs> yeah, I can we? I respond by putting a counter plus one plus one counter on Dockside. Then he's yours. No, I'll pay a light man and give all my stuff aids. I'm gonna swing Kenny at Kenny's Planeswalker. Yeah, uh, I will block with uh, both my creatures. I still wanna kill him. Yeah, I'm double blocking. Okay, that happens. I will kill um, the Gilded Drake. Pass the turn. Do you pay for your mana vault? <clears throat> yes, I will. I pay four to untap it. I draw my card and I will pay two. I don't get a treasure. Yeah, I'll pass my turn. I will untap, I will roll for my mana crypt. All this damage. That's our one, that is free damage. Draw a card for the turn. I'm gonna cost Girapur's Aether Grid, guys. Oh, I know that one. That one's a good card. Yeah, so I can tap two untapped artifact. If I do, I will deal one damage to a creature or player. How many artifacts do you have? One, two, three, that is our untapped and have a mana vault. I currently have four artifacts, but I might gain more with this thing. So I might have an industry of bolting stuff here, okay? I do have a response to that. Ah, oh, come on. Counter spell. You know what, Brian? I'm gonna attack you at your face with my four free first strike vigilance. <laughs> Should I take four? Pass the turn. Uh, during your end phase, I'd like to uh, cast Force of Vigor, uh, exiling Vexing Shusher. Blood Moon. Blood Moon. Uh, I'll target the Blood Moon and the Smothering Tide. I have no response to this, so I guess no one is going to stop this. They both die. <laughs> I had an amazing game here. A Blood Moon, Smothering Tide, and Gear Pay Grid. You cast your upper Ape for Grid. Counterspell was cast. Force of Vigor was cast. I'll tap two. I'll take two, and I'll cast a Brain Freeze targeting myself. Then I'll no problem. That's cool stuff. Upkeep. Draw. No treasure. I'd like to cast Underworld Breach. Uh, I have one small thing I can do. I can tap this for white, crack this, and for this turn, we're gonna cast a Hallowed Moonlight. Until end of turn, if a creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead, and I get to draw a card. So I hopefully draw a good card here, like Silence. No, I, di I didn't draw Silence. One, two, three, cast Lotus Petal. Storm count goes up to three. Crack Lotus Petal for blue. One, two, three, crack lotus petal, storm count goes up to four. You should have the Jeopardy theme song for when people storm or combos. I don't think I can use that though. Uh, brain freeze, storm count goes up to five, but uh, I'll mill 15 cards. Don't see a win right now. I, he's gonna brain freeze and kill us. I've basically got loot with uh, Lion's Eye Diamond now. You kind of have enough with only Lotus Petal and Brain Freeze as well, right? Basically, yeah, I did, but it's a less efficient. With Underworld Breach, he's able to cast spells from his graveyard. And he doesn't use the Lion's Eye Diamond. Actually, he's using Lotus Petal, but now he's using the Lion's Eye Diamond to gain mana. And with the mana, he's casting Brain Freeze to target himself. And then he's casting Brain Freeze to kill us, basically. So the storm count is going to be massive, I believe. I'm dead. Nice. Yeah, well played, well played. A well-deserved win. Play of the game. Red Counterspell was cast, Force of Vigor was cast. I'll tap two, I'll take two, and I'll cast a Brain Freeze targeting myself, then I'll no problem. 
So at my end step during my turn, I had caused gear per 8 grid, Brian caused a counter spell, and Samurai had caused a force of vigor. So when he caused brain freeze, he was able to fill his graveyard with 12 new cards, which gave him fuel enough to storm off and win on his next turn. My opening hand was actually pretty amazing, had an Enlightened Tutor, Smothering Tide, Blood Moon, and a Divergent Transformation. And I used the Enlightened Tutor to find the Mana Crypt, which enabled me to get somewhere, and then I later drew into Gear Per Aether Grid, being a little bit more lucky. And if I would have caused my Divergent Transformation, targeting my two partner commanders, I would get Doxad Extortionist and Godo the Bandit Warlord, and win the game, you know how. This Boros deck was made by Eat More Tad Pod, a patron of mine who basically sent a request, please play this deck, and I will, he wanted to see how it was going to perform. This was an ID from TAC. Now you don't need to donate money to me on my PayPal account, but if you're a patron of mine, hit me up, write a message, and we have a chat, and I will see if I can play your deck on a live stream. But let's talk Boros. I actually think that Vinota, Joiner of Forces, is probably somewhere the strongest Boros commander you can grab. She also actually has um, something of a one card combo going for her. All that you really need is one goblin recruiter to find the complete conspicuous snoop line and put it on top of your deck. Now this is not a deck tech video for Vinota, so we're not gonna go deep into how this deck will function. But a big shout out to Ocean, a devoted Vinota Boros player who want to make this deck good, and actually I also want this deck to become good. But I, I think it would be good for the format if this commander was CDH viable. I don't think it currently is, because a very simple universal Boros problem. The combo is always a little bit hard to assemble. You're never going to be as consistent as other CDH viable decks that you're going to go up against. The reason is simply the tutors. Red and white doesn't have the tutors they basically need. Now they actually have a few. They have Imperial Recruiter and Recruiter of the Guard, which are humans which Venota could attack into and they're gonna find the Goblin Recruiter and from there you can basically try and win the game. But it's not enough compared to how many tutors other CDH viable decks are running around with. But this tutor problem could be improved. Until then we have to gamble. So we're not the fastest, we are extremely lucky if we're able to win on a turn 3 or turn 4 with our Boros deck. We aim to win somewhere around a little bit later. Therefore we have to interact and slow down and control our opponents in some various ways. And that leads to problem number 2. We don't really have enough interaction to stop the current things within the format. Let's look at the Draenite Magistrate for example, an amazing white hate bear that is interacting with all of your opponents in various good ways, preventing them from basically casting their commander. However, mark my words, I have lost games where I had or someone had a Draenite Magistrate in play, but weren't able to prevent someone from casting Fasus Oracle and Tainted Pact from their hand. So we are limited in the interactions that we have, and usually we aren't really able to shut down on our opponents from winning the game. You usually balance this out with some universal interactions such as counter spells or some really solid spot removals in various kinds. So you play Dranat Magistrate in your four color deck and you have some counter spells to basically secure the rest that Dranat Magistrate isn't fixing for you. Now red and white actually got a few counter spells in their style. Red Elemental Blast and Deflecting Swap, they are actually really good cards, but they aren't able to perfectly secure every single time. They are doing great jobs when they are great, but when they are not really viable, they don't do anything. And I've, I've watched this happen several times when people are playing Boros decks, Gruul's decks, or similar, you know, lower power level color combinations, that they aren't able to combo off and win faster than anyone else. And second, they aren't capable of preventing players from winning the game. So they are basically sitting there trying to catch up and then losing because someone else is faster and they can't prevent it. 
This is something that could be improved in the future, however, there's a lot of potential ways that Boros could get better interaction, some better tutors and some better combos in the style of how the color identity and color pie of how Boros cards white and red should look like and behave. This is actually starting to turn into a secondary video, but that's fine, you get two videos in one. I would like to mention Godo a little bit here in the end. So Godo is a deck that is actually kind of functional because he is able to win really fast. He doesn't need to interact because he can just basically go all in straight forward towards his win and just ignore what everyone else is doing and just hoping that he gets there. And that is why the Mono Red Godo Helm is more viable compared to more color identity of Boros Vinota. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you wanna support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.